Hi guys, in this video we'll go through the building of a camera facing plane, the foundation for building billboards. Billboards are 3D planes usually used in replacement for very complex meshes that need to be placed in high numbers in the scene, but never come very close to the camera. These planes usually have a picture of that original 3D model they're faking on them, and if the shader is done properly and under the right conditions, they can be indistinguishable from a real 3D model. To realize this camera facing behavior, several approaches can be followed that mostly depend on the plane attributes. I picked two of them that will also serve the purpose for explaining other things along the way. If the plane has a UV channel where it is normalized on the quadrant, we can use this approach I'm about to describe. The idea behind it is to treat this UV channel as camera space position of the plane itself. So, starting from the UV channel, let's invert the G channel and subtract from it the relative pivot position. We had to invert the G channel because the UV coordinates increase from top to bottom which is the opposite of what we want. Now we have to normalize the so obtained vectors. Then calculate the distance of the vertices from the plane center and use it to scale the direction vectors. What we just calculated is the plane vertices positions as the object will be placed at the exact location of the camera, facing towards it. Now, let's append a zero as third coordinate and transform these vectors from camera space towards space. Now, we need to add the object position to move it from the world origin to the correct location in the world. Lastly, we have to subtract the starting position of the vertices from our result to have the offset to plug in the material pin. As you can immediately see, the plane is behaving correctly, but something is not working. The vertex in the center of the plane is missing. Why is that? The error is coming from the normalized node. First of all, what does vector normalization mean? It means scaling a vector so that its length is 1, so that indicates just a direction. To do that, the vector components must be divided by that same vector length. In the specific case of that vertex, we are normalizing a vector that is composed of three zeros as components, so also its length has the same value. And since dividing by zero is impossible, we get errors. Based on what you see happening when doing a broken operation like this, you may be tempted to use it to achieve some desired visual result. The problem is that not all the hardware architectures handle these errors in the same way, leading to different results on different platforms. In fact, some may return zero, some an infinite number, some will crash without explaining you what's the matter. Usually, the consoles are the most sensible to this type of errors. So, let's expand the normalized node in its components to be able to handle this case. We have to divide the vector by its length, which can be computed by doing the square root of the dot product within itself. If you're wondering why this operation should return the vector length, you may want to know that I could have achieved the same result in different ways. I could have done the distance of the vector from the origin. Or used the Pythagoras theorem.
All these operations return the same result. I'll wait for your hypothesis on why is that in the comment section. Anyways, now that we expanded the normalization of the vector, we can add a max node before the division that ensures we never divide by zero. And our central vertex is back. Now, if you followed my previous video about shader animation basics, you already know that work position of setting the mesh leaves the normal unchanged. So, to avoid lighting problems on this plane, we must recompute the correct ones. Luckily, in this case, it is a super easy task. Since we know that the mesh is a plane, which means the normals have the same constant value all across the surface, we know that we have to calculate just one vector. And since we also know in which direction the plane face is pointing, we know what this value is. The negative z-axis in camera space, the opposite of the direction the camera is looking at. This method of rotating the plane is very powerful since it keeps it aligned to the screen no matter what the position or orientation of the camera is. And since it makes the plane rotate freely around every axis, it is suitable for stuff like particles, or, more in general, things that are suspended in the air, that don't have to be grounded. For this second method of rotation of the plane, we are going to approach the case where we want the plane to look at the camera, but spin around the up axis. This method will allow the plane to maintain its vertical orientation, so that it can be used for representing grounded objects, like the vegetation. So, in this case we are going to look for the three orthogonal vectors that together will form a transformation matrix for our plane vertices. Which means that we have to calculate the new x, y and z directions for our rotated plane. Since we said that the z-axis needs to act as a rotation pin, we know that it will remain unchanged. For the x-axis, which is the one of the plane facing, we need to work out some math. We know that the plane has to face the camera, but keep its verticality, so we can grab as direction the difference between the first two components of the object position and camera position. We can normalize this vector to get the facing direction and append a 0 as third coordinate to have a vector 3. This is our new x-axis. Now, for the last one, since we already have the other two vectors, which we know for sure to be of length 1 and perpendicular, we just need to do the cross product between them. These three vectors have to be plugged in in an inverse transform matrix function. And the vectors to transform are the vertices positions relative to the object position. Lastly, like in the previous method, we need to add back the object position and subtract the starting positions from the result to have our offset. Regarding the normals, we can recycle the difference between the object position and the camera position and transform it from world space to tangent space. We need to invert the sign though. In case you're wondering why I'm not normalizing the vector in this case, it's because the shader automatically does that internally. The billboard topic could be extended indefinitely and way beyond war position of setting the vertices to make the mesh face the camera. 
Let me know which type of problems did you encounter while working with them and they will be discussed in future videos.